Argentina, the deputies bloc of the Frente de Todos coalition condemned the police violence in Buenos Aires against militants supporting Vice President Cristina Fernández. In Libya, the death toll after clashes between supporters of rival governments in Tripoli rises to 32. And Pakistani authorities confirmed the death of 1,033 people due to floods caused by heavy monsoon rains affecting the country since mid-June. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Argentina, the deputies bloc of the Frente de Todos coalition condemned the Buenos Aires police violence against militants supporting Vice President Cristina Fernandez. By means of a statement, the political coalition expressed its discontent for the repression committed by the capital's police forces against citizens and the Vice President's son, Maximo Kirchner, on Saturday night. The political movement reiterated its solidarity with the militants who have been victims of violence and demanded that Buenos Aires government, in the hands of Horacio Rodriguez Larreta, identify the police officers involved in the abuses. The bloc of deputies highlighted that they are evaluating the possibility of taking legislative, political and legal actions in support of the former president. The statement refers to the police aggression this Saturday against the demonstration in support of Vice President of Argentina, Cristina Fernández de Kirchner. The city police attacked the deputy and son of the Vice President, Maximo Kirchner, and prevented him from passing when he was trying to get to his mother's house. Also, Deputy Hugo Yasky, several senators, and the mayor of Quilmes, Mayra Mendoza, rejected the aggressions by La Reta's police. In Brazil, the first presidential debate between candidates to next October's second elections will be held this Sunday. The debate will start at 9 p.m. local time, and the participants include the two main presidential hopefuls, incumbent Jair Bolsonaro and former President Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva, and four other candidates. There will be no audience, and each candidate will only be allowed to bring a small accompanying team. The debate will be divided into three blocks and will be moderated by journalists. During the first part of the debate, the candidates will be choosing a topic and to whom they would be addressing a question. This Saturday, the police of the Colombian Department of Antioquia has detected an explosive device in the municipality of Ituango minutes before the arrival of President Gustavo Petro to meet with local authorities. The incident occurred near the educational institution Pedro Nelspina, where, after the events, the president established a unified command post to stabilize public order. The device was located by a sniffer dog and was detonated under controlled conditions. After the incident, the head of state ordered to analyze the security situation in Tuango and restated his call for total peace to the armed groups. In Colombia, the Philharmonic Orchestra of Bogota, together with other institutions, organized this Sunday the Concert for Truth and Peace, an event in which 16,000 children and young people from the capital schools performed classical pieces to celebrate truth and memory. The so-called biggest concert in the world was an occasion to celebrate the legacy of the Truth Commission. The activity is considered a milestone in the history of music in the country due to its dimensions and it is part of a series of cultural initiatives that pay tribute to the Commission, whose final report revealed the state's war crimes, their consequences, as well as suggestions for non-repetitions. This Saturday, agents of the Secretariat for the Citizens' Security and Protection in Chiapas, Mexico, rescued 82 Central American migrants who were traveling in two overcrowded trucks. According to a statement, the two vehicles were stopped by an immigration verification check. The migrants were rescued while the people driving the vehicles were detained in an operation coordinated with the police. 18 women, 60 men, and 4 children are a total amount of the rescued migrants, according to the report. The drivers of both trucks were handed over to the immigration authorities on charges of human trafficking. Mexico's General Attorney's Office has indicted Colonel Jose Rodriguez Perez for the disappearance and murder of six of the 43 Ayotzinapa students. The announcement was made at a press conference by Alejandro Encinas, Under Secretary for Human Rights and President of the Truth Commission. Encinas said, 
that the information pointing to Rodriguez derived from investigating a series of calls made to an emergency number, which provided evidence about the six students being held alive. Encinas underscored that federal and state authorities at the highest level were omissive and negligent in their functions and that there is evidence suggesting they altered the facts and circumstances around this case, which favored impunity for those responsible. So far, the GA has issued 83 arrest warrants, 20 of them against military officers, for different crimes related to this case. Let's take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. In the United Kingdom, hundreds of British citizens protested in front of the gas and electricity markets headquarters due to the growing energy crisis. The protest was promoted by Don't Pay UK, a movement that calls for a massive strike over unpaid energy bills starting on October 1st. This happened after OVM announced on Friday an 80.06% increase in energy price peaks, which pushed the average household's annual bill from 1971 to 3,549 euros as from October. Protesters also announced that hundreds of citizens would be affected by these measures, while experts warned that people could die this winter due to the high cost of energy, especially low-income citizens, disabled and elderly people. U.S. Border Patrol agents confiscated about 85 kilograms of fentanyl, enough to kill more than 42 million people. The confiscation took place on Wednesday during the arrest of two smugglers traveling near the state of Arizona. Officials said the drug was being transported in several bags in which 340 packets of fentanyl pills were found. Fentanyl is a synthetic drug 50 times more potent than heroin, and the increase in its consumption is a social scourge in the United States and northern Mexico. Thousands of Palestinians in prison in Israel today dissolved the bodies that represent them before Tel Aviv authorities as part of an escalation of protests demanding their rights. The Palestinian Prisoner Society said in a statement that now Israel's prison service will have to deal with the detainees individually. In recent days, tensions increased following the Palestinians' decision to demand their rights while the prison service increased isolation times, removed electrical equipment from several sections, and mobilized additional security forces. The Supreme National Emergency Committee, which groups inmates from all Palestinian factions, agreed days ago to initiate a wave of protests to demand the implementation of what had been agreed last June. Some 4,500 Palestinians are currently held in Israeli prisons, including 31 women and 175 minors. In Germany, the curtailing of Russian gas imports due to the war in Ukraine has prompted the decision of rebooting some closed coal power plants. However, infrastructure issues, manpower shortages, and logistical problems are proving to be major obstacles. Experts say that in many cases, such a restart may not be either technically, economically, or legally feasible, for many parts have been dismantled and sold. Even power plants that had not been completely shut but put in reserve to generate power only occasionally are struggling with a complete reboot. In any other case, a plant's output will be affected by railway capacity limits in ferrying hard coal to the site. The separation nuclear power plant of Ukraine received two ulterior impacts during the last hours. The attacks targeted radioactive material containers. A total of 17 projectiles were fired at the facilities of Europe's largest nuclear power plant in the last 24 hours. Four of them hit the roof of the special facility where 168 U.S. technology nuclear fuel sets are stored. Another 10 projectiles exploded 30 meters from the nuclear fuel dry storage facility. Despite being blamed upon by the corporate media, the Russian troops are present at the plant to ensure its control and security.
Russia on Sunday again accused Ukraine of sharing the separation nuclear power plant, claiming that a pipeline had been damaged in the latest attacks. Defense Ministry spokesman Yuri Konashenko said Ukraine was continuing its provocation, suggesting it intended to create the threat of a man-made nuclear disaster. The Kiev regime continues its provocation with the aim of creating the threat of a man-made nuclear disaster at the Saporia nuclear power plant. Over the past day, two shellings by artillery units of the armed forces of Ukraine on the territory of the nuclear plant were recorded. A total of nine missiles were fired, three of which fell in the area of Special Corps No. 2, which stores new nuclear fuel of the TVOL company and solid radioactive waste. As a result of a projectiles hitting the territory of the Saporia nuclear power plant, a pipeline was damaged by shrapnel as a result of a second shelling, one projectile fell in the area of the 6th power unit and the other five in front of a 6th unit bombing station which provides cooling for the reactor. Despite the ongoing military conflict in Ukraine, on Sunday seven grain-laden ships were authorized to depart from Ukrainian ports, including the port in Odessa. Together, the ships are carrying a total of 210,294 tons of grains like corn and other staples like wheat and barley. The reports of destination are China, Turkey, Romania, Egypt, Italy, Spain, and the Netherlands. On Saturday, some Sudanese UN Black Sea Initiative coordinator Amir Mahmoud Abdullah said exports of Ukrainian agricultural products have surpassed 1 million tons since the launch of the Black Sea Grain Initiative. As the exports grow, so does confidence and prices come down. Since the operations began on August 1st, thousands of voices have been enabled. The Black Sea Grain Initiative was agreed upon and launched in Istanbul by Russia, Turkey, Ukraine and the United Nations on July 22 this year. Telesur will dedicate its coverage of the Football World Cup Qatar 2022 to the figure of Diego Armando Maradona, who accompanied our crew in the last two World Cups with the football star. We also tour our continent with the show De Sur da Viajero. We want this tribute to have its own music. And with that in mind, we invite you to write, compose a song for Telesur's coverage of Qatar 2022 Football World Cup. It must be an original song, never recorded before, or published in any media, and free of legal attachments. Record the song in any format, even with your cell phone, and send it as an attachment to communicaciones at telesurtv.net with the following information, author's name, nationality, and name of the song. The closing date of the call for entries is September 10, 2022. A jury of prestigious musicians and composers from the region will select the winning piece. The prize will be the recording of the song, a video clip, and the wide diffusion of the work. One week after the closing of the call, Telesur will announce the results. We have more news coming up after a financial break, so don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. 32 dead and 159 injured in Libya in crisis between supporters of rival governments in the capital. According to a health ministry report, the death toll continues to rise due to armed conflict between armed groups loyal to the leader of the National Unity Government, Abdul Hamid Mohamed Debeba, and supporters of Libya's parliament elected Prime Minister Fatih Bashaga. Handguns have been fired, explosions have occurred, and vehicles and buildings have been set on fire. This comes after Fadi Bashaga sent a letter to Beba demanding that he step down after the interim prime minister refused to hand over power without holding elections. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad issued an administrative order that furloughs thousands of military reservists and draftees mobilized during the years of war facing the nation since 2011. The decision covers officers who completed one year after actual service, while demobilizing non-commissioned officers and reservists who completed more than six years. Likewise, non-commissioned officers born before 1983 will be discharged if they have completed at least two years of service. The administrative order takes effect as of October 1, 2022, and is the largest one issued since the beginning of the conflict. Authorities stressed that such decisions were made taking into account the data on the ground and the preservation of the troops' combat readiness. Afghan Defense Minister Mohammad Yaqub Muhaid accuses Pakistan of providing airspace for U.S. drones to enter the country. 
who had hit comments come less than a month after U.S. President Joe Biden announced the killing of al-Qaeda chief Ayman al-Sawahiri, an event yet to be recognized by Taliban officials. There was no immediate response to Mujahid's comments from the Pakistani military, but he had previously denied allowing the country's airspace to be used. Border tensions between Pakistan and Afghanistan have risen since the Taliban seized power on August 15th last year, with Islamabad claiming regular attacks carried out from the neighboring country. The drone aircraft overflying Afghanistan represents a clear invasion by the Americans of Afghanistan and its airspace. And we have made a lot of efforts through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and other diplomatic channels to convey this to them and put our objection forward in the meetings. In India, two 100-meter-high illegal residential towers were demolished this Sunday in the suburbs of New Delhi. The implosion, which lasted a few minutes, was broadcast live by Indian television channels. This was an unusual example of steadfastness on the part of the authorities against corruption by real estate developers and local authorities. After nine years of legal battle in 2021, the Supreme Court ruled that the structures had been built illegally. To where they totaled a thousand apartments that had never been inhabited. Thousands of nearby residents and stray dogs were evacuated prior to the demolition, the largest ever recorded in India. Companies sometimes build extra floors or towers using substandard materials, while public officials are bribed to look the other way. In the suburbs of Delhi, it is estimated that more than 100 residential towers have been abandoned, disfiguring the landscape and giving those areas the appearance of gloomy ghost towns. Angola bid farewell today to former President Jose Eduardo dos Santos in an emotional state funeral attended by 11 foreign presidents and thousands of people. The funeral was held in the Republic Square in the center of Luanda, where stands the gigantic mausoleum erected to the first Angolan president, Agustinho Neto. The ceremony was led by the country's president, Joao Lorenzo, who succeeded dos Santos in 2017 and was re-elected in last Wednesday's elections following the victory of the popular movement for the liberation of Angola. Also present were presidents of African countries, including those of South Africa, Mozambique, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Zimbabwe, and Guinea Bissau. In Pakistan, the country's authorities expect new monsoon rains to affect millions of people in the next few days after accumulating over a thousand deaths. Floods caused by monsoon rains have affected almost 33 million people in the country, while authorities are warning about the rise of Indo River in Sindh province, mainly due to heavy rains and glacial melting. Dam managers near the city of Sukur in the same province warned that due to the flooding of water affluents, the floodgates were open to avoid an accident in the infrastructure, an action that endangers the families already affected by the rains. Pope Francis on Sunday prayed for the victims of devastating floods in Pakistan, which have killed over a thousand people since mid-June. In this place that suffered a harsh calamity, I want to assure the people of Pakistan, hit by a flooding of disastrous proportions, that my heart is very close to you. I pray for the many victims, for the injured and the evacuated, and so that the international solidarity will be prompt and generous. Tesla English continues to grow its signal and reaches Europe. You can order from your cable dealer or tune it yourself. These parameters that you see on screen are in place since July 1st, and quite soon further changes will be implemented for the signals in the Middle East and Africa. Now more than ever, the world connects to us and our stories are heard in other faraway nations. This news multi-platform will continue providing truthful content to oppose the hegemonic media's narrative and our faithfulness to our audience. And we have come to the end of this news program. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. 
You can also join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. And now you can also follow us on TikTok at the account at Telesur English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and much more. For Telesur English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.